Um, the first thing I do is I look at a person and look at their posture. So I'm already, like the second I see them, I'm kind of analyzing. I know now she's going to like sit up. But I'm analyzing the way, seeing if their shoulders are, are rolled in, um, seeing like their hips, how their hips are shifted or whatever, how their neck is, if their neck's really far forward, if their neck's back. So those are things that I would initially just analyze as I, you know, say hi or whatever, and then you can go ahead and you can get on. Um, and then the, the next thing that I would do, just in my quick second to, here, let me go this way. Don't know me this. <laughs> go ahead, Sarah. Don't let him go. Okay. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is, you know, obviously take, take the intake, see, you know, what problems that you have. But I also would say, one of the first things for me is I would say, what do you do for your job? You know, typically we work on people at a desk, at a computer, so that's instantly gonna give me the next clue into you know what's tight and what isn't. Um, a big thing for people that, I mean, I guess that's what, 90% of what we work on is people probably at a desk. Um, a big thing with people that work at a desk is they have low back pain. Um, and I know we probably, as they say, I have low back pain, are instantly gonna go right to just working QL or you know this back, the erectors or whatever in the back. Uh, but something I like to point out to people if I can, if there's time, because it's not just like five minutes or something. It's five minutes, I'll just do what they, whatever they say, I'll just do it. But if I, if I have a minute, um, I'll, I'll explain, um, I'm gonna grab, I usually use a chair if I can, if there's a chair around here. But, um, anyway, I, I'll explain that all day they're sitting, if you think about all day they're sitting and all of this is being stretched all day long. So odds are you don't need to work and stretch all of this out. This isn't, this is tight because it's being stretched out all day. It's not tight because it's being contracted all day. Does that make sense? So when I do a massage, I actually, if they have low back pain, it's really hard to get into psoas or something like that, so I don't. But if I'm working this, I'll try to work a lot more into the side. Obviously not like uncomfortable, or I'll, I'll make sure that I'm, I'll make sure that I'm, you know, making sure that it, it's comfortable. But then I'll also, I'll usually work the quads, um, depending again on comfort level or time, how well I know a client. Um, and just in that way, you've got one of, one of the muscles of your quads, one of the heads of your quads is gonna go over the hip. So it'll be used, if you're sitting all day, it's gonna be shortened. So as they stand up, they might get back pain because so as, which I won't work on, but that, that muscle at least will start to pull It'll pull on them and compress them. And that could be the cause of their back pain versus like actually the back. So that's one thing that I consider when I, when I do a massage. And then another thing I consider is everybody always has pain here, right? You always hear that, everybody always says, you know, not everybody, but a large majority of people say the inside of my shoulder is where I get my pain. And again, I consider, you know, if they're, if they're working at a desk all day, sorry, God, I will massage you. <laughs> If they're working at a desk all day, um, they're like this. So this area is not tight, it's not contracted, it's being stretched out all day long. And so I can work it and loosen it and bring it out even more, but I, I've compounded the problem if I, if I work. So I guess with the myofascial style, I guess you could say is I'm very focused on tissue and very focused on like the posture of the body. So. Those would be two main things that I'd consider. I'll work this area, because it feels good still on people and they like it, um, but my ultimate objective is gonna be to try to bring them back, not to try to help them go forward even farther, if that makes sense. So those two things I, I take into consideration. And then I just worked on Kelly last night, so it's pretty easy to know which spots are tight or not. I know, Steph, I thought about that. <laughs> Steph would be mad about that. But, um, um, <laughs> You guys didn't brawl, you said you were gonna brawl, so. Um, I guess I, I'll go to the side. Oh, okay. So, uh, a major muscle that I like to work and it ended up being beneficial, I think, yeah, Kelly, would you say yeah? Yeah. Being beneficial for her last night is the sub scap. That's like, it's like one of my go-tos. I know she never generalized every person, but I just basically assume on a person, if they're rolled in, that it's tight. And uh, it's pretty much always a guarantee that it is. So I'll kind of talk about since I love that muscle a lot, I'll talk about what I do to work that muscle, trying to make it as comfortable as possible for the person. <clears throat> but anyway, one of the things that I'll do is I'll usually take their arm, and again, so if I don't have a chair, 
What I'll do usually is I'll take their arm and set it right there and just say, you know, to relax the shoulder or whatever. Is that comfortable? Mm -hmm. So then I'm holding it. So now I've brought their position, their posture is good. Whereas if I keep working like this, I'm going to change all the muscle memory to be like this. So what I want to do is try to change the muscle memory so that it's in good posture. So anyway, I'll bring it back like that. Or if I sit down, you can bring it back with one arm. But the other thing I was telling Amelia, I did a massage for Amelia a while ago, and I, I, I get very rushed in a massage because we have such little time. I'm always thinking, okay, I've got to do as much as I can. Because people are always like, I want a miracle, you know? And they're like, five minutes, okay? You know, like, fix my four years of problems. Um, so anyway, I try to do as much as I can in that short period of time. So sometimes I'll do this, but I'd rather use this hand and this hand to do things. So if I were to do this, I'll do some work, kind of just have pressure, I'm pressing back here, kind of bringing this back, kind of moving the shoulder blade back, but I might do some work on the pec inside here. Again, not even necessarily focusing on the pec, I might just focus on the tissue, just the tissue in general, all the skin, all the, all the fascial uh, layers underneath are all gonna be forward and used to being tight in this position, so my objective is gonna be to bring it back um, and then the other thing is I might go straight into subscap, so you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'll use my thumb to just go right under into that point. And one thing that I've noticed that helps me to get it, because sometimes it's kind of tucked away, is I might have to work the lat out a little bit first, and then I can get in under there. Or um, the other thing that I do that helps is if you push down the shoulder right here, you push down on that, and again, I'd probably have it like this. If you push down on the shoulder, it brings the shoulder blade more into the armpit so you can get, kind of get into the subscap a little bit more. So um, anyway, and then I don't know if you guys have experience with, if you don't know the subscap, one thing you could do, again, depending on how well you know your client, how much they want to relax, you don't want to talk to them too much or bug them, uh, is one thing you could do to test it is if you were to say, just press on your stomach. As she presses on her stomach, it's going to pop the subscap forward. And then I know if I'm on it or not. So you can relax again. Um, so that's one way I'll test it if it's hard to find. And then the other thing I make sure to check, since I'm working in a danger zone, you could say, I'm in a place with a lot of nerves, a lot of blood vessels, everything. I try to make sure that I ask, you know, are you feeling any tingling in your arm or anything like that? Nope. And if, if so she's not, and again, typically I'll just ask tender level. Like, I'll know if I have it if it's tender. Is this spot tender? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times it's hard to get it's hard to get a stroke with this. So a lot of times it's just holding it. But if I want to get, let's say it's being stubborn and I'm having a hard time just pressing or I'm tired, it's been a long day, whatever it is, I might use I might use some motion with her arm to kind of move move around. And if I do this motion, then that's going to bring the muscle out. It's going to stretch it out, so kind of like a pin and lengthen. Does that feel kind of like a stretch for that spot? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's one of the main things I like to do for subscap. I've noticed some of the advantages to me for working subscap are if people have pain up in this part of their neck, and if I, so if I, you have such little time, if I work a spot and like nothing's happening, or it's like just still tight, then I, I don't want to spend time on it anymore. Because not, it's not doing anything. So I'll try to usually look around and see, even though it might not be the same muscle connection that I'm working on, maybe another muscle is pulling on tissue that's pulling on that muscle that's, you know what I mean, like a chain reaction. Um, so I've just noticed that in here, subscap, a lot of times if this is being stubborn, it won't let go. If I work subscap, this will let go. Another spot, obviously, for here, if people have pain in this area, if I work subscap, typically people go, whoa, it's gone. You know what I mean? Whereas if I work that, people are like, it's still a little there, but it feels better or whatever, you know? Like if you, I don't know. So that's, that's one thing that I do. Um, subscap would probably be my, my favorite um, area to work. Um, I'm trying to think of. Uh, another thing I guess that I do a lot, um, and I don't even know why it would be tight, but people's lats are tight a lot. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. I don't know what they would be doing that you would think traps would always be tight because typically they're going to lift up to use their keyboard or whatever. 
I guess the mouse, if you're pressing, if you're like up and down, or maybe just locking, as you lock, it would lock the trap and lock the tight, the lats to get get them both locked in. But the, the lats um, will be tight a lot. Sometimes if people have low back pain, again, QL, I don't know if that's it because it's so stretched out all day. A lot of times if I work lats, which your lats connect up here and then go into this big band, big like fascial band down here, um, that could be the cause of the low back pain even, is from coming from the lats. Um, so those are the areas those are the areas that I that I focus on. I don't know. I could just just do a massage without any explanation. Yeah, let's see your moves. See my moves. See what I would do. Okay, well I won't talk then at all. <laughs> I'll actually let Callie enjoy what I would be doing. My body mechanics probably aren't awesome, but <laughs> I don't know if they ever. All right, it's just your hands in the video. Right. Okay, good. I can't be held accountable. For that. <clears throat> Can you just tell us what you're doing, though? Um, I usually, my initial thing, I try to kind of do something a little fluffy. Amelia might argue that I don't, but I usually try to have something a little fluffy in the beginning, kind of as my assessment. It's kind of something just a, a little more loose, not as tight on the spots. Um, but then I'm also just checking to see what areas are tight or what things I might focus on once I actually like dedicate my time to something. Um, and again, I guess in the beginning too, after I asked you know, what they did for their job, I would also, or before it, whatever, I would say you know, obviously what spots for you bug you. Um, and then I would try to think based off of what I analyze from their posture and what they do for work, why, why would that spot be tight? Is that spot tight because of what they're doing? Is that spot tight as part of the chain reaction of other things? Um, again, this is, I guess, sorry, I am talking. I just like talking, I guess. <laughs> um, again, one thing that I, that I do like doing um, that I've noticed sometimes because people get headaches a lot, and if they say, I'll ask, you know, do you get a headache from the side of your head? Or do you, does your headache start from the back and go to the front? If it starts from the back, I often will do, I always ask because some people don't like their head touched or their hair messed up. I'll ask, do you mind if I touch your head? Um, and maybe that's a weird question, but um, now that I say it out loud, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, uh, so I'll work spots on their head, and every once in a while, I was talking with Callie, and it, last night when we were doing the massage, none of the spots were tender on her, but sometimes I'll feel, I was telling Callie, I was working on a lady one time that said she got headaches all the time, so they started here, and I worked here, and I just followed up kind of like a tension pattern to like this huge, like almost like a cyst on the top of her head, like this big bump. And I just pressed on the bump and she was like, like whoa, like it was really, really tender. So I just, you know, try to lighten off and work that spot to the point where it kind of, <coughs> I can feel kind of like spreading out, like melting or whatever is what I call it. Melting down like and then, what? Like butter. Yeah. <laughs> like butter. Um, anyway, and then her headaches went away. And, and she, she, she was like, it was funny while I was talking, she was like, when I was a kid, like, I was dropped on my, like, well, not that young, sorry, I wasn't dropped. <laughs> Something she did, like, she fell on her head. Anyway, and that, and that she, like, remembered while we were doing it, that was the spot that she hit. And I don't know, something residual just lingered there forever. She's an older, semi-older lady. Anything's older for me, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, so, anyway, that's, that's one of the things that I do, but, um, just with this up, the spot with such gap. I worked on it with Callie last night, and she said she has a spot on the base of her skull that always bugs her, and I worked on her base of her skull forever, probably too long, because nothing really <laughs> happened, right? And then finally I was like, because I had checked subs gap, but I didn't feel anything. It didn't feel super tight. And I did other stuff, and then went to the base of her skull, and that was really tight, and worked on that for a while, and not a lot was happening. So finally, I just was like, you know, I bet you it's subscap still. Like, I doubted myself for a while, but I went back. <laughs> and then we worked, and it was super tight. And we worked on that for quite a while, and it did cause a change. She said she still has pain in the spot, but you could feel, I don't know how to explain it. It felt like the, the muscle that was really hurting her was like super tucked, tucked in. And then once we worked on subscap, it 